about Mario from a coffee producing family in Mexico. Mario has worked with coffee for over 27 years. His experience includes different positions along the coffee value chain, universities and nonprofit organizations focusing on coffee flavor, coffee quality, coffee processing, and producer education. Mario combines his experience in the industry with a passion for scientific research about coffee flavor and how it is generated. He holds a PhD degree in food science from the University of Otago in New Zealand, a Master of Food Science from the University of Montpellier II of France, and a Bachelor of Science of Food Technology from Universidad de las Mex uh, Americas Puebla of Mexico. And today he will be discussing coffee cultivation techniques, the impact of climate change on coffee production. Mario, we're so excited to have you here. The floor is yours. Thank you very much. Allow me to share my screen, please. All right. Well, I am very honored to be here with you today. And so uh, I will be speaking about, um, I will be complementing the, the, the prior presentation, um, speaking about the, the part of the problem, but also offering or trying to offering some solutions. Of course, as you might imagine, all effective solutions pass through investment. Um, right, so uh, let me start by sharing some insights from a report produced by um, quite a few organizations, including the Specialty Coffee Association. and. Um, in this report produced in 2019, we identified five big issues facing coffee due to, to climate ch challenges. One of them was already mentioned, it's the loss of suitable area for coffee production and shifts to higher altitudes. Uh, as you might imagine, there are places where you can move coffee to higher altitudes, but there are other places where there are no longer any higher altitudes and you are reaching the, the summit uh, of, of the mountain ridges, so there's no more room to move. And also, as you move higher up, you lose surface and you are starting to damage the, 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 the cloud forests that are usually above the coffee line of, in the mountains. Uh, then, of course, we have increased water stress because we have uh, more torrential rains and more erratic rains. This increased water stress, as, as it was pointed out, affects uh, flowering, setting, and, and fruit developing. And that's, that's the second big issue. We have poor flowering and cherry development due to rising temperatures and also due to, to the uh, erratic and, and uh, torrential rains. Um, this is going to uh, impact the vulnerability of smallholders and particularly women farmers. So we must remember that um, amongst all coffee producers, the most vulnerable to climate change are going to be very smallholders and particularly women farmers. And uh, as also as it was pointed out, we are going to experience uh, increased outbreaks of pests and diseases. Um, so uh, this other study uh, uh, shows the forecast of the, the loss of suitable area by, by country and by coffee species by, by 2050. This, of course, is a prediction. You can see in the case of Indonesia, Indonesia is one, one of the countries losing more surface for Robusta, about 70% of, of the current surface for, for Robusta might, might be uh, uh, non-suitable for coffee by 2050. But in the case of Arabica, uh, perhaps Indonesia is one of the more fortunate countries. Uh, only about 50% of, of the current Arabica land might be non-suitable for coffee by 2050. Uh, I would, it would be very interesting to see if this compares to, to the in-countries predictions at all. But at any rate, maybe if, even if the, if the figures are off, 
well, the, the, the outlook is not very promising, unfortunately. Um, also, the yields are expected to drop. So it's not just losing uh, uh, suitable land, it's also losing um, yield per hectare in, in the remaining lands. Now, one, one thing I would like to focus a little bit more is, is coffee quality. Uh, there, there have been uh, many studies uh, correlating climate change and, and coffee productivity and, and, and coffee yield, but there are not as many studies correlating climate change with coffee quality and coffee flavor. So let's remember that coffee quality is linked to many, many factors and uh, among those fa factors, some of them are, are climate related and linked to, to the climate, grace, uh, climate change crisis. And, and so we have uh, light exposure, altitude, water stress, temperature, availability of carbon dioxide and uh, nutrient management. Um, all of these factors, are likely to change uh, uh, due to, to the climate change and, and probably for the wars. Um, some of them not for the wars, but the combination is, 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 not, is not good, unfortunately. Um, this is a case study that we did in Mexico in my home state of Veracruz. We, what we did is to correlate um, coffee quality in terms of SEA cupping score, but also the, the, the flavor profile, the main, the main flavor profile of coffee, such as floral, spicy, fruity, nutty, caramelly, chocolatey. Uh, we correlated the, the flavor profile to a number of um, climate um, variables. And we were able to, to correlate uh, each type of flavor to a different combination of, of climate variables, na namely annual rainfall and annual temperature, for example. So you can, you can see here um, that um, the, the, the floral coffee, the floral flavor is, is linked to a lower temperature and however, it's, it's linked to, um, to a lower, lower rainfall as well. So de depending on how you vary the, the combination of rainfall and, and temperature, your, your flavor shifts from floral to spicy or fruity, then from to nutty, caramelly, and, and chocolatey. Um, this is, in fact, one of the reasons why there are so, so many uh, chocolatey coffees compared to floral coffees, for example, because the combinations are, 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 they are more likely for us to have chocolatey coffees. And so what would happen in my home state, in my home state of Veracruz, uh, if we do two different projections for, for climate change. So we did two, two different um, climate change projections. One is a milder climate change on, on the left, and one is a more severe uh, rate of climate change on, on the right. At, at, and in both cases, the outlook is not good for, for coffee flavor and coffee quality. So this, this is just a, the, the coffee flavor. We, we would be losing almost all of the floral coffee flavor in, in my home state. And um, of course, we are losing uh, suitable surface, but we are also losing the interesting uh, high quality flavor profiles, such as, such as floral. And only the most uninteresting profile, such as chocolatey, would, would remain in my home state. Uh, so um, I think it would be interesting to start doing this kind of uh, linkages between coffee flavor and, and climate uh, variables in other countries, including Indonesia. And now let's 
So that was a little um, a little general view of the problem to complement what was presented in the in the prior uh, presentation. And now let's start thinking about potential solutions. Of course, as you know, there are two different categories of solutions for for climate change. One is mitigation, and the other one is adaptation. When we are talking about mitigation, we are talking about solutions that can help uh, diminish the, the intensity or rate of climate change. And when we are talking about adaptation, we are talking about solutions that help farmers um, adapt to, to the new conditions of climate. So um, on the mitigation side, what can the coffee industry do to help mitigate the and reduce the climate change footprint of our industry. First of all, uh, reducing fertilizer overuse to prevent greenhouse gas emission, soil acidification, and frequent topsoil changes. I would add here uh, the improvement of soil health um, and and organic organic matter and, and improving the, the soil health overall. This includes all, all the life in the soil. Um, second, reducing deforestation to help maintain carbon sinks. And third, reforesting uh, riparian zones. This, these are areas near to streams and introducing shade trees to increase carbon sinks. So um, shade trees, in fact, uh, bid um, uh, within the farm or outside of the farm are, are, are very important as one of our actions we can do to, to mitigate climate change. And now what actions can we do as an industry to adapt and increase our, our climate resilience? And these are very, very broad actions. Um, uh, many of them cannot be done without uh, the financial institutions and, and governments. First of all, it's further research on the impacts of, of climate change and coffee. Um, we have seen some examples here, but, uh, but this is a very dynamic situation and we still don't know all what we need to know in order to be prepared. Uh, second, uh, site-specific on-farm and processing investments. These are things that we can do at the farm uh, to be prepared and increase our resilience uh, from the point of view of the farm. Third, designing and implementing financial mechanisms to facilitate investment uh, in order to, 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 to carry out those actions. Uh, fourth, in investing in adaptation, breeding and development of more resistant coffee varieties. This is something that we are trying to, to do as a, as a worldwide initiative through World Coffee Research, but certainly this is something that we can and do at um, the national level um, um, because uh, the, the locally developed varieties will be better adapted to, to the local conditions and the new, new climate. Fifth, strengthening national development and environmental policies. And six, strengthening farmer organizations for them to be more resilient and, and, um, and more efficient. So as you can see, the word investment is mentioned quite a few times. And uh, well, we need to acknowledge that we cannot increase our resilience without spending money or without investing money and those those resources are prioritary and need to be allocated at, at a national level. Now, uh, talking about uh, the individual farms, what can I do on my farm to, to be prepared and increase my own resilience at, at my own farm level? Uh, so uh, it, it was mentioned before in, in the earlier presentation, good agricultural practices, maintaining productivity in the face of suitability loss. And a very important agricultural practice here is to um, promote and improve soil health, uh, protecting the, the, the organic uh, matter of the soil and, and promoting the, the health of uh, the, the microbes and, and little animals within the soil, which, which really uh, increase the soil health. 
Shade trees are, are also very important. They help reduce the temperature within the, the farm and they help regulate the, the, the climate within, within the farm. They also uh, create biodiversity that mitigates uh, pests and, and diseases. Uh, then coffee rehabilitation, that means uh, we needed to start planting uh, more resilient varieties and these varieties are, should be more resistant to coffee leaf rust, of course, but also maybe uh, resistant to drought or extreme temperatures. Crop diver diversification is also very important. Um, uh, not only because uh, increasing the biodiversity is healthy for the farm, but because it's it's important for for the farmer's vulnerability, right? So, um, uh, what what are the right crops to including in in the coffee farm? That that largely depends on each region and each culture, but we can think about. Uh, fruits, nuts, uh, flowers, foliage, uh, spices, um, and so on and so forth that, that, that can um, be intercropped with, with, with coffee and bring some additional income to the farmer. In some cases, it may be very wise to shift, to shift from Arabica to Robusta, especially in, in those cases where we are already located at, let's say, at the marginal areas for for arabica i i always say that i'd rather have a good robusta than a bad arabica in in my farm and um it's very likely that uh, high quality robustas will will be more and more sought after by by the industry as this situation progresses uh, irrigation is not common in many countries but it can be the solution to the um to the flowering problem in many cases. As, as it was said in the prior presentation, if, if we don't have the, the uh, appropriate um, uh, water regime, uh, the, co the coffee will not flower and the, 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 the fruit will not set. Uh, but with irrigation, this can be solved. Uh, of course, it's, it's very expensive, but it's one of the better working uh, investments and um, and we also need to consider that there are some other initiatives with ha which have higher risks, uh, such as shifting coffee to higher altitudes. Uh, this usually involves um, more environmental risk because the, the slopes are steeper, uh, the the surface is more narrow, and we are affecting protected areas here. And, um, and there's also adaptations at the processing level, but, but these need, need to be done with, with uh, know-how. So let me now uh, discuss some of those adaptations at, at the processing level, um, concrete actions that we can do regarding coffee processing. One, of course, is to reduce fossil fuel usage. Um, I don't know if, if there's anybody still using uh, 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 fossil fuels to dry their coffee in Indonesia, but it, it's it shouldn't be the case. Uh, now we can fuel the dryers with with coffee husk, uh, which which comes from the coffee itself, and and there are more and more uh, and better technologies for for solar drying. So today, solar drying does not look just like putting the the coffee on the on the patio. Uh, now you can have a really high, high tech solar dryer, which um, with with a with a fan that dries the coffee and 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 controls temperature, everything powered um, with solar energy, and um, and they are also low cost. So we can we could even have um, smart solar dryers available for small holders. In, in the near future. And the, the second main approach is to reduce water usage, of course. Uh, uh, this involves increasing the use of the natural process or, or, or the dry method. Um, uh, this, this could um, easily be done in Indonesia if we had 
the means to, to dry the, the natural coffee, of course. Um, uh, we could also uh, adopt the use of low water use emulsators instead of fermentation and, and washing of coffee. Uh, this is a very, a very short summary of the problem and, and some solutions. Of course, I'm, I'm not solving anything with, with this talk, but um, uh, I, I think the, the best approach is to, to work together, at, as it was said before, and to remember that we must invest in our future if we want to increase our resilience. Uh, thank you very much for, for your attention, and um, I am at your disposal at the Specialty Coffee Association. Thank you very much, Mario, for the excellent presentation and insights. And thank you so much for pointing to us not just climate change's uh, impact on uh, coffee production, but also coffee production's impact on climate change. And please don't go anywhere because soon we're going to have a Q&A session and then we're going to discuss your topic further. Thank you very much. And thank you also for discussing with us the cultivation techniques and the impact of climate change on coffee production. Bapak-Ibu sekalian, dampak perubahan iklim terhadap sektor